I bought a cheap low spec Optiplex to see what it can do with Linux gaming. Spoiler, a lot. But first let's talk about the specs. We're talking about an old Office PC with a Core i3 6112 gigs of RAM. I pay 30 euros for it, which translates in around 32 dollars or 26 pounds. The only drawback with this machine was that it came with two different RAM sticks. This prevents the RAM from running in dual channel, which is bad for the integrated graphics chip because it has less memory bandwidth. Additionally to that, it came with no storage, but it has support for an NVMe SSD or a 3.5 inch hard drive. Since I only had a 2.5 inch SSD laying around, I had to get creative. First I 3D printed an adapter to attach the SSD on an unused PCI extension slot, but unfortunately this didn't fit. My next attempt was to print an adapter and fit my small SSD into a 3.5 inch bay. After 2 hours of printing and fiddling around with the drive cage, I managed to install the SSD. The only thing left to do was to install the operating system. For this video I chose Ubuntu 24.04. A lightweight desktop environment like LXQt or a window manager could result in better gaming performance on the system and I will test this on an upcoming video, but for now we stick to Ubuntu with GNOME. Before we talk about the gaming performance, I want to talk about the performance in the day to day tasks. Programs open quickly and feel snappy, browsing the web was also no challenge for this little machine. On top of that, video playback up to 4K was also no problem. With that out the way, let's talk about the gaming performance. Starting with Ori and the Blind Forest, I must say I was really impressed. It ran at a stable 60 at 900p. Yes, this is a 2D game, but it has a lot of shader effects and high resolution assets. I also tried 1080p, but the frame rate was unstable. Next up is Bioshock running at 720p with the normal preset. This time it wasn't quite enough for a steady 60 FPS but it was almost there and certainly playable. The Darkness 2 didn't run as good as I was expecting, but again it was definitely playable. At 720p normal settings we were hovering around 45 FPS. Also with this game I assumed that dual channel RAM could improve the performance. I was hoping that Half-Life 2 would run at 1080p max settings with over 60 FPS due to its age, but I had to turn the settings down a bit and set the game to 720p to be constantly over 60 FPS. But after that it felt really smooth to play. Definitely a good pick for this little machine. The next two games on the list are Portal and Portal 2. Both ran similar to Half-Life 2 with similar settings. I was especially surprised by the latter because it has way better graphics but ran about the same. Yakuza Kiwami was the first game that I would not recommend to play on the system. It ran at 720p low settings at around 30 FPS, which is unfortunately not enough for this game. I assumed that Dual Channel could improve things, but I don't think that it would be enough to make this playable. The last game for this comparison is Resident Evil 4. It ran at 720p with a stable 30 FPS cap. It is playable like that, but I would definitely prefer 60 for this game. To be honest, Linux gaming on a 30 euro machine was way more fun than I thought. Some of the best games of all times are very good playable on this cheap machine. Additionally to that, I was shocked how good it holds up in day to day tasks. The PC has also a lot of room for improvements. I already ordered a new RAM stick and a cheap low profile GPU to see how much I could improve the performance without doubling the price. As always, thank you for watching and if you liked this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing.